All right, folks, you know what it is. Day at the range, always on target. This time, with a little bit of rabbit hole detour that you're not going to want to miss. CZ Showdown, coming up next. Hard hitter. Welcome, Range fans. Mr. Revolver Guy here with DayAtTheRange.com. All right, folks. I'm back on the bench with the old CZ455 in this rabbit hole experiment. You can see everything I wrote about the Harrell tuner over at DayAtTheRange.com. Always on target, baby. Always on target. But anyways... You can see everything that I wrote about the Harrell tuner over there at dayatterange.com and how I got it tuned for the Fiocchi 320. That's one of the opportunities that I've seen with the Harrell tuner, but I think it is a beautiful match with the Lothar Walther barrel. It did seem in my written review to uh, take some of the flyers out, and I did shoot the best group I've ever shot with this Harrell tuner. But today I got a little something special for you. I got the CZ452 out here in Boyd Stock. This thing is total factory, except for trigger work. It's got a Yo Dave trigger in it also uh, to make that trigger a little bit better. But outside of that, this thing's total factory. And amazingly enough, when I went to pull this thing out of the safe this morning, the uh, 452, for some reason, was just screaming my name. It was screaming, look, I'm just as accurate if not more accurate than the 455. And lo and behold, down in this rabbit hole, I'm on a detour. We're going to shoot the CZ 455 one more time with the Fiocchi 320 against the CZ 452. Let's put rounds down range and see who comes out on top. The heavily modified 455 or the base 452 with the Fiocchi 320 in the CZ Showdown, baby. Let's get to it. As you guys can see here, I've done some modifications that I spoke to in my earlier or one of my earlier videos about the additional feet and changing out the bag to fit the stock a tad bit better. I've got this bag squeezed in as tight as I can get it to hold the stock of the CZ 455 and also the Lithgo. But, you know, my CZ 452 was... Just so jealous, I had to bring it out with me today. I've got magazines loaded up with Fiocchi 320 and also, check it out, I've got a new rear bag, Protector Bumblebee rear bag, which sits it up a tad bit higher, which relieves the strain on my neck. We're going to see if any of this makes a difference. Who knows on target, but most importantly, does the Harrell tuner make a difference? I've got some different targets. Down range, they're two inches because I'm running out of the one inch dots. I do have some more one inch dots on uh, order. Um, but for today, we're going to use the two inches. They do have the crosshair lines in them, though. And again, we'll see if that makes any difference. See if I can line them up on the old Bushnell scope. But, anyways, let's put them down on target. Here we go. Excited to use the new setup. And, uh, that bumblebee bag is pretty impressive, if I say so myself. But here we go. Here we go. Let's see here. See what I can do. Fiocchi. 320. I've got two inch targets down range that I'm shooting uh, the spotters on. And then I do have the one incher down range as well that I'll shoot for official group. Of course, I turn on the camera and my groups go to crap. Wow. Huh. 
All right, moving on, next target. I don't know, folks. Uh, I will tell you. That group seemed like it turned out okay. Go over to dayattherange.com and see the written review on this Harrell tuner. I will tell you, I have tuned it. There are some marks on here that I'll roll in the footage. Yeah, it's still tight. I have tuned it to this ammunition. It took me about 25 rounds to do so uh, to where it was taking the flyers out. Uh, and I shot much, much, much tighter group. So I'm not quite sure what's going on now, but we're going to keep shooting. You guys tell me all the time, more shooting, less talking. Let's just shoot today. Get comfortable behind this bag. Oh, so much better. Hot out here, though. What in the world is going on there? Wow. Here I am bragging about the Harrell tuner, but guys, you see it. Just like I see it here at Day at the Range. Man, I'm sweating. It's uh, pretty warm out today. Four fifty-five. you better put on a good show. You got your uh, older brother, the four fifty-two, in that case, just raring to come out. I don't know. It's got to be me, folks. Has to be, because I tell you, um, I shot a .290 inch group, which is where I said, okay, this thing must be tuned in now. After trying many, many different settings, um, so I'm not sure what's going on. Got to be me today. Uh, could be the new setup. By the way, if you go over to dayattherange.com and you happen to read the article over there you will see that I didn't have any of this. On the day that I came out and did that article, I actually forgot all of this stuff. So I used a, a regular sandbag rest, um, just an old traditional three bag rest and, and shot way better groups. Uh, enough with the excuses. I changed point of aim, folks, trying to hit the orange dot. So all me, I'm using the crosshairs and the scope. Or the mill dots. What in the world is going on with me today? I'm not sure. I am not sure at all. This is uh, just bizarre to me. Obviously, I don't have this thing tuned right. I 
I cannot have this team tuned, this thing tuned right. Uh, but you know what? Sorry for Mr. 455's luck. Uh, I'm not taking the blame for that because you'll see over on that written article where consistently I shot 290s, 0.290s to 0.460s, I think it was, but um, easily much tighter groups with the Harrell tuner than without. Not today. Let's get that 452 out and see what it does. Range fans and Reloaders Network. Gosh, guys, you know how uh, this rabbit hole has sent me on a detour. And you know how you pull up to an accident on a major highway and they have the cops out and the EMT out and everybody's out trying to get you redirected to a safer route? I'm not sure this detour is worth it. And I will tell you, I've got some serious anxiety now considering the showing of my 455 with brand new Harrell tuner. Uh, don't judge the Harrell tuner just yet. Again, over at dayattherange.com, you'll see some groups of some pictures that were absolutely fantastic. I don't know what it is today. I don't know if it's because it's 90 degrees out uh, or if the, the atmospheric conditions are really, truly impacting the 22 long rifle that much. Not sure. But have no idea where this is going to shoot with the Fiocchi 320. And what an embarrassment if this stock rifle outshoots the 455. I'm going to give it my best as I always do behind the trigger. Let the chips fall where they may. Let's see where this rabbit hole detour takes us. Let me get the camera turned on downrange. We'll be right back. CZ 452 Varmint. All stock. Let's see where this thing shoots. Hopefully not the camera. All right. Here we go. Ooh, nice! Almost dead center. Uh-oh. You kidding me? That first five is the best group of the day. Wow. I tell you what, this is a beautiful Boyd stop. Uh, I still think, uh, as some of the my fellows over at the Reloaders Network has told me, I still think it might be my cheek well on the 455 that causes me some problems because you can see here this Boyd stop does have a cheek riser on it built into the stock. Absolutely beautiful uh, that I'm using, and I do have it raised up, and I just feel so much more natural. That just goes to show you natural feel um, means a lot when you're behind a rifle, especially something as finicky as 22 long rifle. Oh, here we go. Whoa. Not too bad. Got some vertical stringing. Now that's what the Harrell tuner is supposed to take out, folks. That's uh, on the 455. That Harrell tuner is the AR-15 tutor. Uh, sent him the instructions and also, or not the instructions, but sent him what barrel it was going on and everything came to me perfect, ready to go on the barrel. Um, and it looks beautiful on that barrel as you've seen by some of the pictures. All right, next target. Is it going out to the left? Is it...
man, not too bad. CZ, 452, another five round mag. Come on now. Whew, all right. Last one before we shoot for score. Oh, dead center hit. All right, not too bad there. All right, this is it. The last five rounds of the day. Hopefully to settle the beef. I thought I heard some ra some uh, rifles rattling around in my safe. And maybe it was a sibling rivalry where this 452 and 455 was going at one another. The 452 hadn't been out in a while since the family challenge. You should have saw that over at Day at the Range. But uh, let's see if we can settle. Does the older brother, 452, went out? Or is it the 455 all gussied up went out? This is for score. Oh boy, man, that orange dot sure is small. And look at that way off flipping dot. Well, I don't know. I think we know who won that beef. Uh, by the scoring of the targets, it looks like the uh, older brother, plain old stock, 452, gets it done on this rabbit hole detour. But hang around because I will measure the groups and uh, show you the groups or at least the scoring targets uh, when we get home and roll those in at the end of the video. Hey, you know what? This is my last box of Fiocchi 320. How about we hang some official dayattherange.com call-out challenge targets and shoot one each. Give it the best go. Shoot one each from each rifle. Yeah, hang in there. I'll be right back. Well, you saw the challenge, but I thought I'd give the 455 one more go at it uh, with the official Day at the Range 22 call-out challenge. And it's about time for me to do another call out as well. There's a few fellas out there that I know should be engaged with this call out. We've got uh, even folks all the way from Australia competing in this call out. Go to, go to dayattherange.com, look up 22 call out. You'll see that leaderboard and see how well folks are doing. We're going to give the this time the 452 the first out of the gate and see how older brother does. Let's see. Oh boy, here we go. I'm going to shoot at that top target, top middle target. Dead center. Let's see. I tell you, 22 long rifle is so much fun, but it is difficult to figure out. I think it's harder to shoot. That's three. Here we go with number four. Whoa, what is that? Wow. 
Man, I go on camera. 452 gets an official target hung up down range. And he chokes a little bit, doesn't he? Well, let's see what the 455 has to say. Be right back. All right, folks, we got the 455 back on with us. All gussied up with the Harrell tuner. Bedded action, pillar bedded. Same Bushnell custom scope. Actually, no. There's a Bushnell custom on the 452 that I believe is a much better scope than the Bushnell banner that I have here. But I'm shooting both at the same um, power, which is 14 power. That's, I don't know, that's what works best for my eyesight. Um, I also have them both set for 50 parallax, but not just set for 50 parallax. Yes. I understand that you can move your eye from the rear of the scope and all that good jazz to see if it's actually moving and set it appropriately. So I do have both set appropriately. Enough chatter. This is it. Who would you bet on and which one would you rather have? 455 Lothar Walther gussied up or the 452 base model. We're going to shoot at the uh, target. Right below it, cross has dead center, which I know that means it shoots a tad bit high. Let's see what it does. Oh, man. I said tad high. I hope that was me jerking it. Good Lord, these two brothers just won't make up their mind today. Holy cow, I, I'm not sure what happened to my groups today. It's got to be me. I know I had this rifle tuned, but neither here nor there. There you have it. Man, I got off on a detour. And folks, I apologize for getting off on the detour, especially to my Australian range fans who wants to see this competition continue to go forward with the Lithgo. The Lithgo is coming out next, folks, because we're going to do some testing with the Lothar Walther barrel and also the Lapua Exact. Um, and yes, I'm going to try to tune the rifle to the Lapua Exact ammo and shoot it against Lithgow. So in the next episode, hopefully I'll be back on the main highway and offer this detour for the CZ455 Lothar Walther barrel and Harrell tuner against the Lithgow LA-101 and the Lapua Exact ammunition. Mr. Revolver Guy, signing out. Range fans, I guess I was wrong today. The 455, the younger brother, came out on top. You can see the 455 groups on top and the 452 groups on the bottom. The 452, for being a stock rifle, did not shoot too bad. For the official scoring orange dots, the CZ 455 turned in a group of 0 0.656 inches and the CZ452 turned in a group of 0 0.792 inches but even to try to keep it a little bit more fun I took all those groups that you see on the screen there and averaged them out the CZ455 from an average shot 0 0.672 inches the 452 with that best group of the day, 0.349 inches, the first group of the day out of the 452, lowered the overall average, and the average score for the CZ 452 is a 0.629. So I can't call it. Official score says the CZ 455. Average score says the CZ 452. Which one would you rather have? But then I just couldn't leave well enough alone. You guys saw the targets that I shot in the official day at the range call out.
the CZ452 turned in a 0.763 inch group and the CZ455 turned in a group of 0.695 inches. And before I would leave for the day, I noticed that I had enough ammunition to finish out the day at the range call out target with each rifle. And then I discovered something. Wow, the brothers are camera shy. That's right, you can see up there the CZ455 actually shot best group with a 0 0.313 inches. Unfortunately, can't enter it in the call out challenge. It was the two targets in the middle that will be entered in the call out challenge. The CZ452, its best group on the call out target was the 0 0.461 inches. Well, there you have it. I'm not sure how to call it. Which one would you like to have? The CZ452, the older brother, or the CZ455, the younger brother? Mr. Revolver Guy, signing out.